Hello and welcome to Dateline Lagos on Channels Television. I'm Ayo Tunde Balugu. Coming up on the program, Governor Sawolu empowers 2,000 artisans, Lagos Mortgage Board meets with Alatiz, and Governor Sawolu receives Committee of Vice Chancellors. So let's get into it. The Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sonwolu, has empowered 2,000 artisans with modernized equipment after eight weeks training that will indeed help them compete with their peers out there. Take a look. It's a 2021 Tradesmen Artisan Day, as well as a graduation ceremony for upskilled artisans in Lagos State. This administration... Thousands of them gather at the LTV Blue Roof Agnimbi to witness the occasion after eight weeks of training. <laughs> Governor Babajide Sonwolu makes his way to the venue and the graduates are excited to see him. Then the Commissioner for Wealth Creation and Employment explains how the employment program has benefited residents in the informal sector. Sir, your presence here today and Miss Presence Day to serve into a very busy work schedule speaks volume of the value you accord the immense contribution of tradesmen and artisans to the state's economy. And we hereby say a big thank you. La Costa. under my watch as your commissioner and this administration. This annual upscaling of practicing tradesmen and artisans, I believe, is a clear demonstration of government desire to ensure that our tradesmen and artisans are not detached from the rapidly changing dynamics in their chosen vocation or trades. So on behalf of my ministry and the Lagos State Council of Tradesmen and Artisans of the State, we register our position to Mr. Governor for his kind gesture in approving the annual capacity building program for 2000. Mr. Governor, it's been unprecedented. 2000 tradesmen and artisans in the state. It has never been this good. I want to recall that since the inception of this present administration, under your leadership, a number of support programs have been implemented. These include, and really not limited, to provision of annual subvention of 6 million naira for the Lake State Council of Tradesmen and Artisans, training and upskilling of 500 in 2019, 2,000 in 2020 and another 2,000 in 2021. The Council of Tradesmen and Artisans applaud the Lagos State Government for bringing up the Capacity Building Initiative and request for an industrial skills centre for artisans. It is evident that the Lagos State Government, His Excellency Mr. Osama symbolises good government in this thoughts and policies. We had the efforts of the Mr. Governor and his entire cabinet for the love and the support they have seen. Experienced and benefited from Mungali's administration. His leadership has ensured the continual development of artisans and tradesmen skills in previous editions. We were given 1,500 slots to train artisans and tradesmen, but this time around, Mr. Governor gave us 2,000 slots in order to ensure optimal training for our members. The land we apply for has been approved what I year to be handed over to us, being the money requested for by the legal state government, we can provide it. We want our governor to wait the money for us so that 
It can reduce our payment to our landlords. Then the president of the Council of Tradesmen and Artisans presents an award to the governor. Then the governor takes the stage, emphasizing that the upskills and trade enhancement program will help the artisans be in tune with the changing dynamics in their chosen vocations. Technology and innovation are the bedrock of economic development across the world, and it is certainly no doubt that Lagos continues to take the first step in that line. The transition of human society from the old agricultural age to a new industrial age, now to a digital age, has brought about a new wave of innovation and emerged from the old disruptive ways. And we can certainly see that being placed here today. Internet and digital technology has come to stay. And I can see that my tradesmen and artisans are also now becoming digitalized. They are becoming in tune with the reality of the 21st century. They are ready for the future. Is that not so? The artisans that are in Lagos are ready to take the future forward. And so that's why you can see that what Lagos State is about is to help you realize that future from today. All of the trainings that we've given to you, all of the equipment that we have purchased in partnership and we've handed over to you is because we want you to not feel belittled by anybody. You are our pride. You are the pride of our own state. You are the pride of your individual profession. And you need to raise up, stand up, stand counted, and feel proud of the profession that you have stand for and that you are doing so very well. And that's why you can see that what we have done here today is to enhance and improve the efficiency of your profession. It's to make sure that you can make more money. You can do it quicker, faster, better, and proper. And you can show others that this is a new way, this is the future of my profession, and I can see the government that is working with me to deliver that future. The best graduating artisan appreciates the state government for the opportunity to upgrade their skills. We all actually thank you for the opportunity given to us by giving a skilled vocational training education for which respect and women, Lagos State. I must say the truth that we will be filled with a great impact in the life of every one of us. A lot of us have been in this place for years thinking we have known everything, but with this opportunity given to us by the state government, he has made us know that a lot is still, a lot of us are still doing a creative job. The training program has really opened our eyes to know and they operate with clients in terms of modern day technology. The event is rounded off with the presentation of equipment to 2,000 artisans, which will facilitate their transition into modern practice in their respective vocations. Let's talk about accommodation. For those who are still in doubt about the Lagos homes, I must say, indeed, it's a reality. And that's because the Lagos State Mortgage Board met with owners of the Godo Housing Scheme to educate them on safety, among other issues. Lagos Homes Igondo was the first estate commissioned by Governor Babajide Sonwolu in September 2019. The 492-unit scheme comprises one, two, and three-bedroom flats, was built to help the housing deficits in Lagos. Successful applicants of this mortgage arrangement have since taken ownership of the property. There are always two sides to anything in life. Two years gone, the Lagos State Mortgage Board meets with beneficiaries of the Rent to Own and Ownership Mortgage Scheme to educate them on health, insurance, safety measures, among others. Shelter is key to human existence, especially in Lagos State, where land is one of the most expensive resources judging from size and population. According to the 2018 World Bank statistics, Lagos State, as a growing mega city with over 23 million people, having 60% between the ages of 21 and 60 years, and a growing rate of 3% per annum, 
we need over 4,000 housing units every year in order to create shelter for its growing population. Hence, the need to plan and provide more affordable homes for our residents. This urgent need of the state government to reduce the massive housing deficit brought about the establishment of Lagos State Mortgage Board in 2012. And since then, the agency has gradually been reducing the housing deficit in the state. Initially, through the Lagos Homes Ownership and the presently the rent to home scheme policy, in which only 5% equity contribution is required for anyone to own a home, and the rest payment spread over a period of 120 months with a single digit interest rate. The interest rate, I am sure, cannot be found in any state in the Federation. Suffice it to say that what we are benefiting today is nowhere in Nigeria. So please, can we just give our governor a round of applause? <laughs> it is of note to mention, and you all will agree with me, that the value of this magnificent and comfortable edifice has increased incredibly and thus as residents, we must guide and protect it jealously. I'll pop here and just give you a short story. We started in 2014. And when we started, we started with the Lagos Homes Ownership Mortgage Scheme. We had probably about four or five schemes to start with. And part of these schemes were uh, Michael and Nahuru scheme in um, Shoguru, Oba, and one was in Rupeju. Um, I know some applied for my Nahuru and couldn't get it, get to a border scheme at that point. That was about 2015. But what I'm saying here is the equity that has actually gone on my Nahuru today, um, it's unbelievable. Um, we sold it for probably about 17 million 800,000 then. The asking price now without, um, uh, should be probably about 28, 30 million. So, um, something is happening here, an economy is being built, and if you take ownership of this, I know this is one of the best estates with facilities in Lagos State. Then the lecture begins, and top on the agenda is insurance benefits. Should increase the mortgage of the uh, fall ill and died, or there is a permanent disability, and he's unable to carry on with his usual business and could not pay the daily, uh, the, the, the monthly repayments, what happens? Does it mean the person has to lose his or her home because he cannot work due to illness or sickness or death? Does it mean the children will be thrown out to the streets? Then you need insurance. So we will talk about the most the two most important insurance for this particular uh, uh, a, a, a property, that is the fire and the special peri insurance and the mortgage insurance, mortgage protection insurance. First of all, the fire and the special peri. As I've explained what fire is, if they are it, it covers the building against fire that could damage you, damage the building and cause you not to be able to uh, live in that home. And then, even if there is uh, the fire, insurance is there to pay the mortgage that you have taken to obtain such home. Another vital issue is safety and fire prevention. We have um, four classes of fire. We have a class A fire, we have the class B fire, we have the class C and the class D fire. The class A fire is fire involving free combustibles. What are free combustibles? Things that burn and turn to ashes are free combustibles. The class B fire is fire involving flammable liquid. Petrol, kerosene, diesel, alcohol, ethanol, they are all flammable liquid. The class C fire is gaseous fire, fire involving gases. And the class D fire is fire involving metals. You don't store cylinder in your kitchen. Cylinder are meant to be outside. Fire does not start from cylinder. Fire starts from burner. And if you have your burner separated from your cylinder, in case of fire, you can easily go outside and shut the valve. 
and immediately the valve is shut, you have cut away the supply of oil well to the burning fire. And apart from that, cylinder itself is like bomb. If you have cylinder in your, uh, your apartment and there is fire in the building, the fire may not even start from the kitchen. It may start from any other part of the building. If the heat in that building rises to a certain degree, the cylinder will rise from the floor and explode like bomb. And that is why when you see a building of, on fire, after a while, you just hear something like a blast from the building on fire. Booah! They have cylinder right in that burning building. That is the reason why you install your gas cylinder outside and you run your hose to where you have your burner. In case of fire, you can easily go outside and shut the valve. Also, fueling of a working generator is absolutely wrong. You don't fuel a working generator. If you go to a filling station to fuel your car, they tell you switch off your engine. What is applicable to you and the filling station is also applicable to you at home. You need to educate your children. Let them know in case of emergency, you run out of the building. You don't run inside. You don't run inside. You know, most of the time when there's emergency, we get there and they tell you two children are trapped. And when you discover it, they'll be in their father or mommy's room. And if the fire keeps on increasing, they'll hide under the bed, inside the wardrobe, or in the toilet or bedroom of the master bedroom. That's why you find them dead at times. So that's why we all need to educate our children. Even if it's not at home, if it's in school, and there's an emergency in the building, then you need to run outside. And you don't return back to the building until you are asked to return. The fireman demonstrates how to handle situations in case of any of the incidents. This is the handle where you carry the extinguisher from. If you want to lift and you want to also control, it's through this handle. This is the gauge, the gauge of extinguisher. And this is what mostly road safety will check on the road and tell you your extinguisher is not in charge. It's not intact. When you want to fight fire, you watch the direction of the wind. If the wind is blowing the fire towards you, you fight from behind. You understand? If you face the fire, the fire will attack you before you get to the, uh, uh, the seat of the fire. So you fight fire from behind. Use the blanket. So now he's going to use the fire blanket. So a fire of this nature can be, you can attack this from any point. Because it's not moving towards any part. So, move gradually. Few kids. Bad So, what he has done is just to cut away oxygen from what is burning. In case you are bleaching oil, and in the process of bleaching oil, it results to fire. What do you do? You cover. By covering, what are you doing? You are protecting the penetration of oxygen into the burning object. Okay. Yeah. You approach it gently. Yes. Let's clap for him now. Uh -huh. So you can remove now. So when you want to remove, you remove gently. The way you put it is the way you also remove. So in case the fire does not go off, you return it. After the lecture, the general manager hands over fire extinguishers to residents of Latif Chakundi Estate and giving assurances that more housing schemes are coming up, targeting first-time owners. And we have said to us, this is what we are going to do around all the estates. Our neighbor governor, Mr. Babajide Olushala Songulu, commissioned this beautiful edifice. And basically, on that day, he had mentioned that all allottees should take ownership of this beautiful edifice. And um, we are the agents um, mandated to collect the repayments on behalf of the state through the rent to own program. So basically, we have to have a close relationship with our allottees. Um, it is very, very key that repayments are made as at when due. Um, it is very, very key insurance payments are made because so many people don't understand what insurance is all about. The state government is really, really trying. Um, if you look at the premium interest rate, it's just a single digit interest rate, which is about 6%. You can't get that anywhere in Nigeria. You cannot. The prices are basically being subsidized. Other schemes are coming up like Ibeshi, for example, where you have a three-bedroom for just about 13 uh, million, 500 thousand 
Uh, the last one we did with was the Prince of Bulay, which the governor commissioned last, uh, about two months ago. We had as minimum as uh, five, 3.5 million for the one bedroom. So, um, Ibeche scheme is coming up, Shongote scheme, where we have um, 744 units coming up there. Um, Ibeche has 480. We still have Odonosa and Bowa. Yeah, that has 660 units that is, coming from, that is coming up and will be commissioned very soon. Over 10,000 schemes have been delivered by Governor Babajide Sonwolu, all in a bid to provide comfortable homes at affordable prices. And the Lagos State Mortgage Board says it will continue to engage owners on maintenance and safety of their property. Finally on the show, Governor Babajide Sonwolu received members of the Committee of Vice-Chancellors of Nigerian Universities and then announced that he will not interfere in the appointment of the Vice-Chancellor of the Lagos State University, Lasso. The governor, please. The committee members of the vice chancellors of Nigerian universities visit Governor Babajide Sonwolu at the government house in Alausa Ikeja. Your Excellency, sir. The team, led by the chairman Today, of the vice chancellors of yeah, Nigerian yeah, universities, yeah, Professor yeah, Samuel yeah, Edomiekumo, yeah, commends yeah, Governor yeah, Sonwolu's yeah, leadership yeah, skills yeah, and asks him to join yeah, hands yeah, with the committee and improve the educational system. In terms of innovation, good governance, leadership steps, and all that, in education, I think Lagos is leading and is uh, setting the pace for other states to follow. We have also keenly followed your leadership steps and actions in this uh, volatile, uncertain, and complex uh, or an ambiguous times. And we come to a conclusion that the level with which you handle the issue of uh, COVID-19 when it ravaged the state is commendable. And also the support you are rendering to our own very brother, uh, Lagos State uh, University, you know, you are the visitor there. And the way you are trying to uh, handle the issue of the appointment of uh, uh, substantive vice chancellor, we are also following. As chairman of committee of vice chancellors, our satellite is there. We are watching very, very well. As you may be aware, the committee of vice chancellors of Nigeria University it's a 59-year-old uh, organization. And the purpose is to be a veritable platform for Nigerian universities to attain academic excellence through cooperation and exchange of ideas. Your Excellency, sir, our core mandate is to work together to add value to the Nigerian university system, which is the largest in Africa. The governor applauds their professional skills and says he will not interfere with the ongoing selection process of the appointment of the substantive vice chancellor of Lagos State University. You've expressed to us, you know, what is common to all of us, lack of adequate funding, not only at the citadel of learning, uh, various ones, but even at government. But we understand and will appreciate where our own institutions, how critical they are to us in delivering you know, the real dividends of democracy. I dare say that we'll we continue to ensure that uh, tertiary institutions, uh, if not fully, fully funded, are adequately provided for to ensure that they continue to do that which we have asked them to do. And for various reasons. One, we believe that higher institutions are the places where Indeed, leaders of tomorrow are truly, really being, you know, molded and being, you know, formed. And deliberately, we need to look at that area and continue to support them, continue to breed and bring out, you know, um, students or tomorrow's leaders that we all could be truly proud of. And so that's why, and I'm saying publicly, that Lagos State is planning to also have two additional universities. Not only have we set forth the, the, the project to have both a University of Science and Tech 
and the state, but also to have a university of education. The process of identifying you know, the next vice chancellor is ongoing. And I can assure you that all the extant laws are fully, will be fully, you know, um, adhered to. I have no intention to interfere or have any interest in the throw out of the would be vice chancellor. We have put in men and women of impeccable character that have distinguished themselves in their choosing profession. And we're believing that they will do for us a good job. The vice chancellors of Nigerian universities say they are ready to work with the state government to raise the standard of Nigerian universities. Well, that's the program for this week. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Ayotunde Balogun. Until next time, please stay safe.